What's up guys, Eric here and welcome to Rant and Review. In this video, we're going to be talking about Arrow Season 5 episode titled Penance. So careful for spoilers if you're not caught up with Arrow this season. You've been warned, let's get into it. Okay, so where do I start with this one? So for me, so far, Arrow's been trying to improve. I can see that. But it seems like there are little bits of season four that just won't go away. Something about this episode just felt lackluster compared to what they've been giving us so far in season five. First, let's talk about Oliver and how he ditches all responsibilities to break Diggle out of jail. Where my problem lies with this is we have a handful of recruits that Oliver knows are reckless. He knows they don't obey orders very well, particularly Wild Dog. And he just up and leaves them not knowing if what he's doing with this Diggle op is going to be successful. There is no backup plan because he's pretty much going rogue here. He doesn't have anybody on his side other than Lila. And that's it. So, I mean, he's just leaving this team without any leader if something were to happen to him. Uh, he's leaving these untrained superheroes running around the city doing whatever they want while he's out doing this op. And of course, he leaves Felicity in control of this team as the de facto team leader, which was a big problem for me. So Felicity. Oh, Felicity. So I do have to give her some credit this week. She did speak as the voice of reason when it came to the Diggle situation. She was like, what is he going to do? You're going to break him out of jail? He's just going to be a vigilante for the rest of his life? He's got a wife? He's got a kid? I mean, this all made sense, and I feel like she was at least saying something to that effect. It's like the writers wanted Diggle back, right? They wanted it back by a certain point, and this was their magical way to have him on the team. A really quick way, one episode, one and done, now he's back on the team. And is it me, or does it just seem like Diggle's personality is very different this season. He seems like he's a bit off right now. I'm not sure, but something is definitely different about him. Let's talk about the start of the episode where Wild Dog once again, even after what happened last week, breaks the rules and doesn't listen to Oliver. Artemis is supposed to be learning her role and Wild Dog oversteps yet again, thus screwing up the operation yet again. I'm so tired of of seeing this. Also, did it seem strange to anyone else that Artemis just stood there a few feet away from Curtis and didn't help him? I mean, he was getting his face punched in and she's just there hanging out. And the whole time I'm thinking, isn't Artemis like right there? Why is she not doing anything? I mean, she's just standing there. Uh, anyway, Wild Dog is the worst. I don't care about him in the least. He's a liability, similar to like when a show adds a baby <laughs> as part of the main character's story arc. You know, they get a kid or a kid will pop up on the show somewhere and the baby will be in danger, kidnapped, or somebody will at least try to kidnap the baby, slow down the heroes or cause them to lose focus. That's Wild Dog. He's like a baby, you know, with guns, <laughs> which by the way, is anyone else tired of seeing him just lay into people with guns? I realize that Oliver kills when he has to, but Wild Dog just shoots to kill every time. Like he's got like pistols, he's got rifles. I mean, why are we not training him to use something else? Why is he just using guns? I mean, you could at least say, hey, these are non-lethal guns, but they I don't remember them saying that anywhere in the show. Um, let's see. Okay, so Church is probably the most boring villain I've seen on any TV show. Straight up. He's just a cliche character. He doesn't have much personality. I think the most personality we've seen from him was at the end of this episode when he had Wild Dog captured. That's the most we've gotten from his character. Other than that, he's just a gang boss who seems to be, like his signature is using you know brass knuckles or whatever the knuckles that he has. Speaking of knuckles, uh, so we have Ragman, who seems able to block bullets and explosions. So when everyone else is trying to escape, who do you think we should leave behind? Curtis? No. Artemis? Wild Dog? Ragman? Ragman, of course, right? But no. Who wants to stay behind? The most reckless and stupid team member, Wild Dog. Ragman would have most likely made breakfast, lunch, and dinner out of church, but I guess that makes too much sense. So we see church with his knuckles, his signature knuckles, I suppose, going up against Wild Dog. And of course, church wins in the end. Had it been Ragman, probably would have been a different story. But, uh, you know, they had to find a way for Wild Dog to get captured. And so now we have liability with Diggle around. If he is helping out the team and he gets captured at any point, he will pretty much go right back to jail. We have Wild Dog who will be used as a bargaining chip. And Lance was boring this week. <laughs> Just completely boring. And Thea is still running the city. She's pretty much the mayor at this point. I mean, this episode just didn't do anything for me. Really, it didn't. I don't know if you guys can't tell. I don't have much positive to say about it. I was not impressed in the least. So many storyline cliches from like 
old bad movies. Like, okay, so stuff like Lila trying to sneak in and telling the guy to refresh his Wi-Fi and magically she appears on the list. C- come on. How dumb can someone be? How does this guy still have a job? I mean, like, are you kidding me? Oh my goodness. And instead of shooting them all, Church tosses his gun down and wants to have a fist fight. How cliche is this when a villain does something like this? Give me a break. And then the rescue scene with Diggle being lifted out of the prison yard. What was that? I'm like, wait, wait, did that really just happen? How did that? Okay. And then, well, at least we got some trick arrows at the start. I guess that's a positive. And the Bradva flashbacks. Let's talk about those. Uh, So they were so directly tied to what we're doing on the show. It's like, what's the point? (laughs) They can't get it right with the flashbacks for me. Either they are too vague and too disconnected or like this season are so similar. It's not really my idea of fun. I, you know what? I can't I can't even go on anymore, guys. <laughs> Sorry. This episode was just mediocre for me. Okay, so my final score, I can't give this more than a 5 out of 10. I just can't give it more than that. So 5 out of 10 is what I'm going with. Uh, I'm so ready for this team to get some real action. Face off against a real bad guy. Church is a joke. His street-level gang shouldn't even give Oliver a paper cut at this point. Uh, the only things I enjoyed in this episode were the ragman scenes and... I mean, that's pretty much it. Ragman is the most exciting character on the show right now. Uh, This episode really served one purpose, to get Diggle back on the show. I can only hope that Diggle helps get this team in shape. Maybe he'll be, you know, he'll come into the fold and help Oliver train these guys. I don't know anymore. This episode was, like I said, it was just the worst for me. It's the worst so far uh, this season. But anyway, did you guys like it? (laughs) Agree or disagree with anything I talked about in this video? Let me know down in the comments below. I want to hear from you guys. Uh, you know, I'm very active in my comments, so I hope to see what you have to say. Maybe you guys liked it. Maybe you found something interesting. I just thought it was a mess all over the place. Felicity is the worst team leader ever next to Oliver. (laughs) Anyway, that's all I got for you today, guys. Take care. Have a great day. Have a great week. And I will catch you tomorrow.